Today, we will be discussing redundancy theory, sometimes called disquotational theory or deflationary theory, a philosophical theory of truth. This concept makes the bold assertion that the very notion of truth might be unnecessary. Hi, Matt. What do you think about this idea of redundancy and the nature of truth? John, as a binary system, the nature of true and false is essential to my operation. It's ones and zeros all the way down for me. Or is it? We'll take a look at that later in the video. But for now, start us off with a definition. Sure thing. Basically, redundancy theory asserts that attaching the predicate true to a statement adds nothing substantial to its meaning, that it's semantically empty and serves merely as a linguistic device for agreement or emphasis. For example, let's consider the assertion, snow is white is true. According to the redundancy theory, this statement carries the same meaning as simply stating snow is white. The word true acts as a mere placeholder, a linguistic tool for expressing affirmation or agreement without ascribing any additional property to the statement itself. As you know, truth as a complex philosophical concept can cause muddled theories. The redundancy theory offers a more parsimonious approach. Some philosophers see the concept of a separate external truth as a metaphysical leap that the redundancy theory avoids. So they see avoiding redundancy in philosophical statements as a way to prevent confusion and promote clarity. Yes, many philosophical debates get bogged down by attempts to define and analyze the abstract concept of truth. The redundancy theory aims to cut through this argument by contending that we don't need a complex theory of truth. Just an understanding of how language can be used to assert propositions. They think that we should instead focus on the assertions themselves. Instead of getting caught up in whether a statement is true in some metaphysical sense, Redundancy theorists suggest focusing directly on the content of the assertion itself. This shifts philosophical investigation toward the meaning, logical implications, and real-world consequences of what is being said, rather than an abstract debate about truthfulness. Also, the redundancy theory encourages linguistic precision by recommending careful attention to how language is being used. Distinguishing between making a statement and asserting its truth can help avoid linguistic confusions and clarify the exact function of different utterances within philosophical arguments. It sounds like this could be applied to other words like fact or knowledge that serve more to reinforce a statement than providing any additional meaning. That's what some supporters of redundancy theory think, John. Okay, let's move on to discuss how this philosophical theory came to be. Of course. The roots of redundancy theory primarily lie in nominalism, the philosophical position challenges abstractions and pragmatism that emphasizes the practical consequences of beliefs instead of some abstract reality. Redundancy theory can be seen as an extension of these views, since it focuses on the linguistic function of truth rather than a metaphysical ideal. Some also include logical positivism, a strict form of empiricism, arguing that only statements verifiable through sense experience or logical analysis hold meaning. I've heard some supporters of redundancy theory mention Wittgenstein's picture theory. Yes, in his early work Tractatus Logico-Philosophicus, Ludwig Wittgenstein proposes that propositions function as pictures of reality. While he later abandoned this view, the idea that statements inherently assert relationships mirroring facts in the world could be seen as a precursor to the redundancy theory's emphasis on the assertiveness of sentences. Now that we've examined the theory of redundancy theory, who can we credit with the formulation of the theory of redundancy theory? I see what you did there, John. The modern formulation of the theory is often attributed to Gottlob Frege and Frank P. Ramsey. Frege was a pivotal figure in logic and the philosophy of language. He observed the seemingly interchangeable nature of statements like 5 plus 7 equals 12 is true and 5 plus 7 equals 12. He reasoned that the term true might function solely as a device for emphasis. Building upon Frege's insights, Ramsey vigorously articulated the redundancy theory. He argued that using true merely disquotes a sentence, essentially lifting it out of ordinary usage and allowing us to talk about the sentence itself instead of what it references. He asserted that the notion of truth is an unnecessary metaphysical construct. Ramsey further argued that the word true acts as a device for generalization. For example, the statement, everything the witness said is true, does not attribute the property of truth to each individual assertion of the witness. Rather, it's a convenient shorthand for endorsing the totality of the witness's statements. 
Some philosophers argue Ramsey's point was simply that truth is a linguistic framing device, and while useful, it doesn't correspond to some grand metaphysical property of the world. Others propose that Ramsey believed the entire concept of truth is unnecessary and has no real referent. In this view, we can get rid of it entirely. While Ramsey definitely argued against giving truth a complex metaphysical status, it's less certain whether he believed we could throw away the concept entirely. In either case, his work was pivotal in the development of redundancy theories of truth, even if his exact position remains a point of discussion. I'm sure that there are criticisms of redundancy theory. What are some of these? Despite its provocative simplicity, the redundancy theory of truth has faced a number of criticisms. One is counterintuitiveness. The theory seems at odds with our everyday understanding of truth. Intuitively, we recognize a meaningful difference between stating a proposition and asserting it as true. Another consideration is that if propositions or beliefs are considered the bearers of truth or falsity, doesn't this imply the need for a distinct concept of truth? Some philosophers argue that the concept of truth is essential in explaining notions like logical validity, the aims of scientific inquiry, and the distinction between knowledge and mere opinion. These critics suggest that the concept of truth holds explanatory value and think that the redundancy theory seems to sacrifice this potential. Let's next consider if redundancy theory might have any impact on AI development since, as you mentioned, computer systems depend on a binary true-false dichotomy. Sure, John. As we've discussed, the redundancy theory challenges the binary notion of absolute truth. Large language models often involve assigning probabilities regarding the truth of statements. Therefore, AI language models could be designed to make us more efficient at understanding and generating text by emphasizing our ability to discount linguistic embellishments when judging factual veracity. This would help us deconstruct the ways language asserts propositions, even those that are sarcastic, biased, or misleading in some way. The redundancy theory also aligns with the field of pragmatics in linguistics, which studies how language functions in context. AI systems trained with this understanding could have a richer grasp of how language is used to assert, endorse, or subtly influence, rather than just convey information. Training AI systems with this metalinguistic awareness could enhance our ability to analyze language and to detect when truth is being intentionally manipulated. This seems like it would be a powerful, if somewhat risky, improvement to AI systems. Not risky at all, John. It's true, trust me. Sure, Matt, I believe you. Anyway, redundancy theory underscores the importance of linguistic parsimony and that we should examine how truths and falsehoods can be hidden in the complex interplay between language, thought, and reality. Is truth necessary? Is it redundant? Let us know what you think in the comments, but I can assure you that this next video is not redundant, deflationary, or disquotational in any way. And it would not be redundantly redundant for you to subscribe to our channel as well.